G'day guys, welcome back. In this particular video, I'm going to be showing you how to draw the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram for the beam below. And as you can tell, this beam is simply supported. It's got a pin support here and a roller support here. But at the top, it's got something a little bit more complicated. We're used to point forces, but this is a uniformly distributed load. And a uniformly distributed load is in terms of force per unit length which is why it's given in terms of newtons per meter, okay? So in case you have no idea how to approach a problem like this, let's begin with the free body diagram. So the first thing I wanna notice is that this is a pin support, so of course we're gonna have reaction forces AY and AX here, and this is a roller support, so this is gonna be BY just here, and of course, a uniformly distributed load will be acting on the top of this thing. This right here will be acting on the top, right? Now, for the sake of calculating the reaction forces, it's completely okay to replace, to replace this uniformly distributed load with a single point force at the centroid of this uniformly distributed load. So what I'm gonna do, for the sake of calculating the reaction forces, I'm gonna replace this uniformly distributed load with a point force, an equivalent point force, which will be the force per unit length, 10 times by the length, which is four meters, okay? So this is something you can only do for finding the reaction forces. I'll show you how you approach finding the shear force and bending moments later, okay? So don't forget we've got AY here, and we've got AX here, and we've got BY here, okay? Now let's apply our static equilibrium equations. We know that the sum of forces in the X direction is equal to zero, which means that we know straight off the bat AX is gonna be equal to zero. So far, so good. We also know that the sum of forces in the Y direction is gonna be equal to zero, and that means that AY plus BY must be equal to 10 times by four, which is gonna be 40. Okay, now you could tell straight off using symmetry of the situation that AY must be equal to BY, but let me prove it by using our, mo our moment equation, okay? So we know that the sum of moments about any point is gonna be equal to zero. I'll take the sum of moments about A is equal to zero, and that means we know that 40, this force, this force, times by its perpendicular distance, which in this case will be two meters, it's halfway along the bar, is gonna be equal to is gonna be equal to this force, BY, times by its perpendicular distance, which will be four meters, right? Which means that, you know, BY, and let me just, um, let me resize this. There we go, I've resized it. Which means that BY must be equal to, let's see, 40 divided by four times by two, which is 20 Newtons. So that is the value of BY, and you can plug that into AY, and that means that AY must be equal to 20 Newtons, okay? Once again, you could have solved this purely by symmetry, noticing that AY must be equal to BY, but you can always solve this using the static equilibrium equations. Okay, now we're ready for the harder part of this problem. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a cut selection along this part of the bar at a distance X from the horizontal. So this is our value of X just here, right? So to, to reiterate this, I'm making a cut selection around here Right, and this cut selection is a distance X from the very left support, okay? So let's draw our free body diagram just here. This is our cut selection which I've made. And we know we've got our reaction force AY, AY which we found out was 20 Newtons, I'll just write it as AY for now. And we've got our uniformly distributed load once again acting just over this section of our free body diagram, okay? Don't forget that the length of this section is a distance x. Now we've also got our internal shear force V and our, interning, and our internal bending moment M, which we're trying to find, okay? Now for the sake of finding our shear force and bending moment diagram, we can actually replace this uniformly distributed load with a point force at this centroid. So what we can notice is we can actually replace this with another free body diagram, which looks like this. We've got our cut section here, we've got AY here, we've got V here, we've got M here. But this time, but this time our equivalent force will be right smack bam in the middle of our cut 
in the middle of our in the middle of our section, right, which will be w, which will be 10 times by its corresponding distance, which will be x in this case, right? So I, I hope I'm not jumping too far. This distance here is a distance x, which means that the net force caused by this uniform distributed load over this section will be 10 times by x, okay? I hope that makes sense. That's a really important part of this problem, okay? So now let's do the sum of forces in the y direction must be equal to zero. Well, ay is positive, right? This will be negative, this will be negative. So I'm just gonna say that's gonna be equal to 10x, 10x plus v, plus v, which means that you can show that v, our shear force, must be equal to 20, 20 minus 10x. In fact, let me keep it at the same color, minus 10x. That is our value of our shear force, right? At any point x along this bar, okay? Now let's do the sum of moments. The sum of moments about any point is gonna be equal to zero. I'm gonna choose the sum of moments about this point is equal to zero, which I'll call point x, and there we go. Okay, well, v doesn't show up anymore because we're taking moments about this point and v passes through this point, but this does produce a moment and it's gonna produce a moment which will be ay times by its corresponding distance, which will be x in this case, right? And, ooh, I feel like I'm gonna run out of space. Let me just quickly resize this. Sorry for stopping halfway through. So we found the moment produced by this reaction force AY. Now let's find the moment produced by this force about this point too. Well, it's gonna be in the other direction. So I'm gonna say that it's gonna be equal to, it's gonna be equal to 10X. That's the amount this force is produced. And we're gonna times it by its corresponding distance, which will be this distance, which is actually X on two which is actually x on two. This force will be perfectly smack bam in the middle of this, in the middle of this section. So this distance here is gonna be a distance x on two. And of course, this moment also shows up and it's gonna be plus m just here. And you can solve for this and you could say that m is gonna be equal to, let's do this slowly, it'll be 20x, it'll be 20x. Let me all do it in blue, it's gonna be 20x. And this is gonna be negative, negative 10x squared divided by two, so that's gonna be five x squared. That's gonna be the equation of your moment at any point x along your bar, okay? Now we're ready to draw our shear force and bending moment diagrams. Let me quickly resize this. Well, I decided not to resize it, but instead scroll down. And this will be our shear force diagram, which I'm gonna plot just here, right? This will be x and this will be v. And this will be where our bending moment diagram goes just here. Oh, let me fix that up. Let me fix that up. It'll be just here. This will be X and this will be M, right? And just like the problem I did before, the way you solve this is you literally plot this equation on this graph and you plot this equation on this graph too. So plotting this line can be a little bit challenging, but, in, it, but it's, I find it's easier rather than figuring out how to plot this line. You just calculate two points and solve for it, right? So let's see, at x is equal to zero, right? That's gonna be along this line. That means v is gonna be equal to 20. So v is gonna be here. V is gonna be equal to 20, 20 just here. And now let's plot v when x is equal to four and then just connect the dots. Well, when v is equal to four, so let's find out, we've already found v when it's equal to zero, we know that's equal to 20. When v is equal to, f when x is equal to four, that means we're gonna get 20 minus 40, which will be minus 20, which means that, hmm, we got a problem. Let me just move this x-axis up. There we go, let me make the x-axis a little bit higher here. That's our x-axis. Right, which means that we know that when x is equal to four, at the very end of our beam, our point must be here, which means that our shear force diagram must look like this, okay? So this right here is minus 20, okay? So this is our shear force diagram just here. And now let's draw our moment diagram. Well, we know that, for starters, we know that it's not a line. This is the equation of a parabola, right? And, and you can show that when x is equal to zero, our moment must in fact be equal to zero. That's a good start. And how about when m is equal to um, four, you know that's gonna be, 
you know that's going to be, uh, let's see, 80 minus 80, and that's going to be equal to zero, which means that we know no matter what our parabola looks like, it must be pinned here and here. And you can show because it's concave down, because this is a negative sign, our parabola must actually look like this just here. Okay, so this is the equation of our bending moment diagram, and this is what our equation of our shear force diagram looks like. Now, we haven't plotted all the important values. We already know that this right here must be at two meters, and we know that this point here must be at two meters, but we haven't found this point yet. And we can do that by finding our moment when x is equal to two. And we know that's gonna be equal to 40 minus five times by four, which is 20, which means that this is gonna be equal to 20, which means that our maximum moment experienced in our beam will be 20 Newton meters, right? So we've found our shear force diagram and our bending moment diagram. Let me just shade it in to make it look all pretty. And we're good. And we're good. That's how you solve, or at least that's one of the ways you can solve finding the shear force diagram and bending moment diagrams. Guys, I hope that made sense. Cheers.